Come on and let's clap for Jesus in this place. Can we make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Come on, Victory Outreach. Come on, the whole movement. Come on, everybody online. Put the hearts on. Put the fire on. Come on and let's give God 10 seconds of a praise break. Shout a little bit. God is on a move. And I feel His presence in this place. And you don't have to wait for the end of the service to be touched and healed and to receive a miracle. I've been in a little over 35 countries of the world and everywhere is the same. It doesn't matter if we speak the same language. It doesn't matter the age, the culture. When heaven comes, when heaven comes, miracles happen. And I'm telling you today, before you leave this place, you're going to receive a breakthrough. This is a place of breakthrough. This is a place full of miracles. So if you're a first time visitor, let me tell you, this is a church that is not just a church, it's a movement full of supernatural power, deliverance and miracles. And today you are in for a treat. Come on and clap if you believe it, Victory Outreach. So, I have a book called Courage in Crisis, The Ultimate Guide to Success, where I share some of my story. I grew up in one of the largest, most dangerous ghettos in Eastern Europe, and I lived without running water and electricity for almost three years, had a difficult upbringing, and then just as I stepped into this season of difficulties, I received Jesus and I was radically touched by the Holy Spirit and this changed my life. So I'm sharing some of the principles of business and success in life in this book and I have a few of them. Most of them are on Amazon but I have a few here too. So who wants one? I want to give one to somebody. I like this guy here. What's your name sir? Huh? Felix. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you after. God is doing something for you. But I don't want to go in the prophetic too early, you know. Let me preach a short sermon and then we'll flow in the spirit. And then I have another book that is even better than mine. <laughs> Descendants. I just got it this morning. And who wants one? You have to go get it in the back because this is mine. I'm going to keep it. I have the signature and everything pastor thank you for having me and thank you for the victory outreach family what you're doing is blessing the world and let me tell you it's not just nice words this is prophecy are you ready for prophecy this is only the beginning because listen the first wave is strong the second wave is stronger but everything in the bible is three so this third wave Say three. And we're also in 2023. And there are also three times. The past, the present, and the future. So this third wave is bringing the future into the present. How many of you believe that? Say yes. You should be shouting if you believe that. All the way to the back. I really appreciate being here. And I believe that God is going to do something. Can you just lift your hands for a second towards heaven? And I love to say that when we lift our hands, this is not to show how spiritual or charismatic we are, but this is the international sign of surrender. So as you lift your hands, you're surrendering to God's presence, you're surrendering to His glory, and you're saying, God, I'm hungry for you. God, I'm not just here to listen to a talk from a guy from another country I'm here to encounter your glory Holy Spirit I want more of you move in this place move in this place 
Move in this place. Move in this place. Lift your hands and just take it in, take it in, take it in, take it in, take it in. Take a deep breath and take it in. I'm telling you, people are already, already, already getting healed. Souls are already getting touched. Chains are already being broken. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And say this word. Say, Jesus, I thank you that you're turning pressure into power. Thank you that you're turning my greatest crisis into my greatest asset in Jesus name if you could see in the spirit you would see a lot I promise you that make me a promise as you're sitting and listening to the word, be expecting for something to happen in your body and your soul. Because this happens everywhere. The other day I was at a secular conference with Tim Story. And in the lobby, I met a guy, Hispanic guy. And he was all excited with his Louis Vuitton glasses. And he was saying how the universe has blessed him so much the universe and I went in the prophetic and I told him how come you say the universe when your whole family are Christian and been praying for you for years he got all teared up I said and also your back is getting healed right now I said and who is in your family that has the name David, the name of King David? He began to weep. He says, my brother. I said, he just came out of jail, but God's going to heal him. I said, you should go to an amazing church called Victory Outreach in Chino. I said, even if you're not in Chino, you can find them everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> but listen, if God can do this in a lobby of a secular conference in Las Vegas... What can, what, what can he do in this atmosphere today? Let's pray and then we go into the word. And then we see what the spirit will do. Genesis chapter 45. Verse 4 and 5. And the Bible says, And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves. Because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. Push your neighbor and say, they might have sold you. But God has sent you. Verse 8. So now it was not you who sent me here. But God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh. And the Lord of all his house and the ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege to again open your holy word and receive the sustenance and life that comes through your living scriptures. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will literally baptize this place with your fire and glory. Speak to us clearly with your own language that surpasses words, that surpasses cultural, national barriers. Feed us 
until we overflow. And may we come out of this place with a fresh anointing for this new season you're calling us in. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name. And all the people said, say the power of pressure. Look at your neighbor and say the power of pressure. Say from anointed to appointed. Say pressure takes me from anointed to appointed. You may be seated. In a very dramatic turn of events, this incredible Bible character by the name of Joseph, who is one of my favorites because he is a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. He's betrayed by his brothers. His clothes are torn, just like the master's. He is sold into slavery in Egypt, but he has to save the world at 30 years old, just like Jesus. He is thrown in the prison. Peter says that by the Spirit, Jesus spoke to the spirits in Tartarus, in the prison. And then on the third day, or in the third year, in Joseph's case, he rose from prison on the right-hand side of the Father. Pharaoh. And when he stood on the right hand side of Pharaoh, Pharaoh gave Joseph a Gentile wife, just like God gave Jesus a Gentile church. He gave him a church from all the world. There is only one portion of Joseph's life which hasn't yet manifested in Jesus' ministry. And it's the scriptures that we just read. Joseph met his own brothers, the Jewish boys, and he said, you thought I was dead, but I'm alive. You thought you betrayed me, but it was God's plan. And the Bible says that one day Jesus will reveal himself to the people of Israel, and this will trigger the most incredible end time revival. Push your neighbor and say, we're living in these days. The most incredible part with this scripture is not that Joseph went through everything he went through, but that he looked at his brothers and he says in verse number 8, he said, it was not you who sent me here. It was God. See, I'm trying to preach to somebody today in Victory Outreach and tell you that when you think that this person broke up with you, it was God. Wait for it now. You think that your boss fired you. It was God. See, this is the most incredible part of this portion of scripture. We understand so much, not just about the character of God. He is the God who uses everything for our good. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, we know that all things work together for those who have been foreknown. They work according to his purpose, say purpose. But for there to be a purpose manifested, there has to be a problem in your life. For us, in the Western world, many times, a problem is a contradiction. And we think that if we have a problem, this is the proof that maybe I'm far from God. Or maybe God is not in my life. Or maybe God is not blessing me. But what if... You come to a level of spiritual maturity like Joseph where you say, actually, this part of my life, the worst part of my life, the most difficult part of my life, this was the moment when my problem was actually God's providence to manifest his purpose. Do I have a witness in the house today? But this is the thing. When we are in the situation, we cannot see God. So it takes time. Oh my goodness. So listen, 
When I was 12 and got radically saved by God, I was reading a book uh, that was about God's greats, about God's generals. And as I was reading this book, God spoke to me and he said, you're going to travel the world. You're going to heal the sick. And I saw myself in visions. I didn't even know what it means. I saw people falling. I saw people getting up from wheelchairs. I hadn't seen it anywhere in my life. Two weeks later, I was watching a tape like a VHS tape. And I saw an American man who was doing what I saw in my dream, Team Story. And immediately I thought, wow, my life is now going to change for the good. Because I had the anointment. Say anointment. You see, many people think just because they have the anointing, they're already ready for their appointment. But you can be anointed and not ready for your appointment. God has to take you through stuff to get you where he wants you. Listen to that now. So I thought, now my life is going to get so good. My mom met a guy. He was a psychopath. For three years, we had to run for our life. He almost killed her. I was asking, God, where is the anointing? You anointed me for great things. You gave me a dream. You gave me inspiration. You showed me how I'm going to change people's lives. And now I find myself, listen to that, after two years of abuse, I had to go and live in a house with no running water or electricity. I had to read my Bible with a flashlight. I would go each night and read the Bible with a flashlight. And I would ask the Holy Spirit to wake me up for school because I didn't have an alarm clock. But if you ask me today, and thank you for the question, by the way. Somebody says, why are you talking to yourself? Because I enjoy intelligent conversation. Listen. Listen. If you ask me today, would you remove this part? Would you have it not happen? I would look at you in the eyes like David and I would say, I was glad that I was afflicted. I was glad that I was afflicted. Because now, in hindsight, in the rear view mirror of life, I can understand that maybe God didn't have me go through all of this stuff. Without a purpose. And maybe, just maybe, can I get a witness in the church today? Maybe he actually saw me that when I'm 30, I'm going to be an advisor to politicians. That when I'm 30, I'm going to be on national TV. That when I'm 30, I'm going to be a millionaire. That when I'm 30, I'm going to be all around the world. And maybe he saw me and he thought, what will it take for this man to be in this level at 30 years old and not go crazy? So he will have to live without electricity and water just so he knows. He will have to go, can I preach a little bit? He will have to go through abuse just so he knows. He will have to read the Bible with a flashlight just so he knows. I'm trying to tell you today that if you didn't go through the things that you went through, you wouldn't be the person that you are today. So thank God for every trial. Thank God for every test. Thank God for every problem. Thank God for every devil to come and fight against you because every fight made you stronger. Can I have 10 people in Victory Outreach that shout for Jesus? <laughs> Say my problem has a purpose. Say it's not meaningless. What a powerful revelation. What a, what a crazy revelation that he looked in he, he, the eyes of his brothers and he said, you didn't send me here. So when this lady liked me and she accused me of something I never did, God was involved. No, no, you didn't hear that. So, so, listen. So when I went to prison, I was not just by prison by accident. I was sent by God to prison. Now, I know that we're in the western part of the world, and it's hard to understand how can God send you to prison. But just check the New Testament. Paul wanted to go to Asia. The Spirit said no. He went to Philippi. 
And where did he end up in Philippi? Beaten. In jail. Why would God send you to jail? You see, we are thinking about the beating. God is thinking about salvation. We are, we are thinking about our level of problems. And we are trying to understand, why am I going through this stuff? God says, you have to. Like, let me, under, can I explain something to you? Sometimes you think you're fighting the devil. You're actually fighting God. You're not fighting God. Sometimes you think you're fighting, you're fighting a human. You're fighting the devil. You see, our problem is that we think we are fighting just the obstacles or the person or the boss who fired us or whatever happened in our life. We think that we're against flesh and blood. Let me preach to somebody in Victory Outreach. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. You are anointed. Listen to me. You're anointed. Say, I'm anointed. But you also have to be attacked. Do you know what it means to be attacked? It means to be afflicted. I was afflicted. Listen, I'm not saying that God is the author of evil in your life. I'm just saying that God can use even evil in your life. I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying that God will sugarcoat your life to manifest your purpose. In fact, sometimes he might be looking just for a messed up person like you. I'm going to try this side because these people don't know what I'm talking about. He might be looking for somebody who is insecure like you. Sometimes he's looking for somebody who was in jail just like you. Somebody, sometimes God is looking. Listen, look at all the people God used. Rahab. Can I preach a little bit? And any time God wanted to use somebody, he brought him through pressure. For Jacob to become Israel, he had to fight God. That's pressure. For Daniel to become the leader of an empire, he had to be thrown in the lion's den. That's pressure. But you think Daniel was thrown in the lion's den by the king and his friends who betrayed him. I think that God had his friends betray him. Only people who have walked with God and are mature in the spirit can understand that. That God cares more about bringing forth his purpose than your feelings. See, you think about your feelings, God thinks about his purpose. So when he sees Jesus and he says, what will it take to save the world? It will take Gethsemane. Even the God man said, Father, if this cup can pass me by, but not my will, but your purpose, say purpose, say purpose, say there is a purpose, say afflicted. That's what it means to be attacked. Have you been attacked? And you know, when you are attacked, this is the test now. Are you going to get bitter under affliction? Because if you become bitter, this is what God told me. I saw this man kicking my mom in the head. I was screaming for help while he was kicking her in the head. I was screaming, help, help. And in the night when I went to sleep, I cried myself to sleep. And I asked God. How can a man be so evil? And this is what he told me. He said, son, if you get bitter, you will become just like him. You see, this is the son who saw his father drinking. And he hated his dad because his father was a drunk. And then he became 30 and he became a drunk. The curse is activated by bitterness. You will turn into what you hate. Or you will turn into what you love. If your hatred 
is stronger than your love, be careful. Say afflicted. After he was afflicted, I mean attacked by his own brothers. He's now looking at them and he says, it wasn't you, it was God. What's your name? Richard, they took his coat, they cut it apart, they soaked his clothing in blood. He said, no, no, it's okay, don't worry about it. You didn't do anything, it was God. God had them soak his clothing in blood so that he can become a type and shadow of Messiah. Jesus, whose clothing were soaked in blood. But only in the rear view mirror of life, we can see the purpose of God in our problem. When you go through time, at first you feel bad about it, then you think maybe it was good, then 30 years later you're like, thank God that this happened. <laughs> thank God that she left. Oh, you should clap here. Thank God that he turned his back on me. Oh, you should clap. Really, you should shout a little bit. Thank God that it happened. Say afflicted. Say attacked. And then, this is powerful. He was abducted. Say abducted. Oh, man. I thought I'm going to go from anointed to appointed. But you have to first be afflicted. Then you have to be attacked. Then you also have to be abducted. He was literally abducted. But in his abduction, pastor, there was purpose in his abduction. Because God asked the question, how are we going to get this boy to Pharaoh? So he says, I'm going to use Abraham's mistake. We have some people who read the Bible here. I'm going to use Abraham's mistake. The Bible says he was found by the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites are the children of Ishmael. Ishmael was the, he was the biggest mistake of Abraham. So God says, I'm going to do something generational in this church. I'm going to use even your mistakes for good. I'm going to use your mistakes as a vehicle to get you to the purpose that I have for your life. Can I get three people in Victory Outreach today? Say abducted. To be abducted means to be taken. Against your will. To be abducted, listen to that, means that you find yourself in circumstances where you are out of control. Somebody is in control of you. How many of you understand? Say yes. You, you think you're forgotten? When God, you, you, you think you're forgotten just because you're abducted? God knows where you are. God knows where you are. I was praying one morning seven years ago, and God said, go and speak in Germany. We have a church, uh, church that we build in Germany. He says, go, you have to speak and have host a healing meeting in Germany. I'm like, I have other plans. But you know, when you have plans, you have to cancel your plans for his plans. That's a, just, just a side note. Because sometimes I think we're so organized and so Americanized. And so orchestrated that we are kind of pushing God out of the equation of our life. How many of you want God in your life? Yeah. Do you have space in your calendar? You need a space. You don't need to be booked. Like this is my time where I'm not booked to be booked by heaven. Do you have this time? You should. It's the most fruitful time. So he says go. I said when? He says like this Friday. This is like a Monday. I'm in the midst of the fastest growing church. I'm in the midst of all the things I'm doing. He says, go now. I get a ticket. I'm going to the airport. I arrive. I'm at the check-in. Okay? I check my bag. I take my stro uh, strolling bag, my small bag, my carry-on bag. I'm going through the scanner. They put it on the scanner. As I'm waiting for the bag to come, I see one policeman on my right side. I see another one on my left side. I look around. Four of them. Six. Ten. Fifteen. I'm thinking, maybe I'm getting abducted now. 
I could hear the guys working the, the, the suitcases saying, oh, he hid it, he hid it, he has hidden it in between the lining of the suit and the cover. He hid it, it's, it's there. Do you see it? Yes, I see it. Put it again. Oh my God, it's really there. All of a sudden, the 15 became 30. I was surrounded by policemen. A gentleman looks at me, he says, come here, we know what you did. I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> now crazy stuff are growing through my head, okay? I'm thinking now, maybe somebody put something in my bath. Maybe, I'm, I'm like, just trying to understand naturally what could have happened. Because that's what we do. We forgot that we're in a spiritual war. Oh, so I'm there, I'm like, what is happening? So he says, we know what you did. I said, I don't know what I did. He says, we have to cut the lining of your suit because you hid it between the lining and the suitcase. I said, please do it. In front of my eyes, he cuts my suit. He opens a huge knife underneath. My jaw dropped. Immediately I felt when I saw this huge knife in my own suitcase. Immediately I felt chills. Pictures began to go through my head. I'm on TV. A preacher terrorist tried to kidnap a plane. I thought, now I'm going to get a black stamp. I will never be able to travel. And God said, I'm going to travel the world. I'm standing there overwhelmed. They want to arrest me now. I saw it with my eyes. I saw the knife. I'm like, nobody put it there. It was in between the knife. I didn't even know how this knife got there. And then I heard the voice of God. And he said, son, this is spiritual warfare. Don't be afraid. Do you think this is the real knife? This is, you're thinking naturally. You think it just, it, it happened. Look at your neighbor and say, nothing just happens. Say it again, nothing just happens. Say, coincidence is when God or the devil are staying anonymous. In this case, it was the devil. And so I began to pray, Pastor. I said, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? He said, ask for the general of security in the airport. I said, I want to talk to the general. They're like, what? I said, I want to talk to the general. I will not talk to any of you but to the general. Now they think maybe he'll reveal his plan. <laughs> These guys, you haven't seen police people so happy. They found a terrorist. Like something that only happens in the movies, they thought it really happened now. <laughs> so the general comes, uh, older gentleman, and I heard God say to me, speak from the spirit. Speak from the spirit. Look at the person next to you and say, speak from the spirit. You know how you know that you're speaking from the spirit? You're not speaking from this part or even from your heart. It's from your inner being. So I looked at the man in the eyes and I said, sir, I'm a man of God. This is a mistake. I'm telling you the truth. I'm innocent. You have to believe me. I'm going to preach the gospel now. Listen, Bulgaria is an orthodox country, not like Protestant. So our kind of church is considered too wild for them. So when I said I'm a man of God, it doesn't, doesn't say anything to him, but it said it in the spirit. Say the spirit. So he said, I'm a man of God. You have to listen to me. You have to trust me. You have to let me go. I'm going on a mission for God. The man turns to all the 30 guards there. And he repeats what I just said verbatim. He says, this is a man of God. It was like he was hypnotized. He said, this is a man of God. He's going on a mission. You're stopping him. Let him go. Don't you see he's innocent? Yeah. One of the guys, one of the guys there is like, but boss, 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 boss. Let's, uh, we need to keep the, the evidence. This is the suitcase. Is the evidence. We need to keep the evidence. He's like, no evidence, no nothing. Just take the knife. Let the gentleman go. But the back, yes, the back, you should let him go. He looked at me. He gave me my passport back. He gave me my boarding pass. He said, sir, I'm sorry you missed your flight. Maybe you get on the other flight. <laughs> I went around. I went down to the escalator, bought another flight, went back the same stairs. The same guys are looking at me. <laughs> I arrive in Germany. Listen, 
This is where you know you've been abducted. The people who are supposed to meet me, they say, oh, you won't believe what happened to us. I say, no, you won't believe what happened to me. <laughs> they said, when we were coming to pick you up from the airport, SWAT team stopped us on the highway, took us out of the car, made us lay on the floor, took the car apart because somebody told them that this model and this year car was trafficking drugs. Then I knew. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you're in a crazy fight. It looks crazy to you. It looks like this doesn't make sense. First my car broke down, then my electricity stopped, then I had pain in my back. Everything is breaking around me. I'm here to say you're about to break the back of the devil, and that's why you're going through abduction. Shout if you believe it, come on. Shout a little bit. I went in the meeting, I went in the meeting, I went in the meeting. They bring a lady that was on her deathbed, last stage cancer, couldn't breathe, couldn't move. She was like, I mean, you could see her dying any second. As I prayed over the lady, the power of God hit her. Her color began, begins to come back. Her eyes began to lighten up. Listen, she goes to the doctor next day, no sign of cancer. Now you know. I said, now you know. But, but what if we took the theology that the problem is the proof that God is not with me? I would have thought, oh, maybe, maybe all these things that happen, they're proving that if God was with me, why would this happen? Because we want to cut all the things from our life that don't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. It just has to make God. I said it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to make God in your life. Say abducted. When you're abducted, you're going to be tempted to run away. But I'm telling you, if you run, you will run your whole life. Pastor, what do I do if I find myself abducted? Cry for help. Speak from the Spirit. Stand in God. Stand in church. Say, I'm going to go and pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to declare war to the devil. Do I have 10 people at Victory Outreach today who are about to declare war to the devil? This depression is demonic, we break it. This cancer is demonic, we break it. This, this pain is demonic, we break it. This noise in your right ear is demonic, we break it. Say yes if you believe that. Say afflicted. Attacked. Abducted. And I love this part. Accused. He is now accused of raping a woman. The worst thing you can imagine. He was a pure man who never in his life laid with a woman. And he was accused of being a rapist. Say accused. It's not nice when you're accused. Have you ever been accused? And sometimes we know you're accused just because you did a little bit. There are some, there are some accusations in life where you actually did something. So now it's coming after you. <laughs> but if you're really anointed by God, can I tell you something? You will be accused for no reason. Because the enemy will come after you. You're going to break generational curses. You're going to save your whole family. You're going to be the first person in your family who makes it. Yeah. 
but you're going to be accused. And you're going to be accused by the people you're trying to help. Pastors know about these things. Pastors know about these things. You live your life trying to serve people and help people, and they, they turn around and come after you. And when you're accused, the temptation is to make an excuse and defend yourself. Because the devil knows that if you defend yourself, God cannot defend you. If you try to protect your reputation, God cannot build your reputation. A gentleman asked me the other day, he said, man, you're friends with Tim Story. You're friends with this guy, you're friends, every, all these people. How did you get to meet them? I don't know. I don't even know. I lost it all. When I had to plant this church, I lost it all. I gave my last money for it. My last friends left me. People started to talk bad about me. A new church in town. People whom I thought were my brothers said the worst, unimaginable things about me. I was crying one day. I was feeling miserable like you do sometimes. Thank you for that. There in the back, there is somebody real. Thank you for waving. I was having a pity party. Oh God, I'm doing your will. I'm doing everything I know. <laughs> and everybody's leaving me. How can you do this to me? And then God spoke to me and he said, you should be thanking me right now. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I was a little bold. I was like, why would I be thanking you? For what? He said, it's the first time in your life when you have an opportunity to know who are your real friends. Because when your reputation is intact, when everything is perfect, hey, I'm preaching today, telling you. When, when you have the money, when you have the connections, when you have the deals, when you have the kids, when your life is moving forward, everybody wants to be around you. But sometimes your life goes down. It's true. It happened to the best. You don't want to be accused. You will never be appointed. I promise you that. Jesus was accused. Peter was accused. Paul was accused. All of them were accused. Jesus said, be glad when people talk all kinds of nonsense. I'm paraphrasing. Against you. For my name's sake. So God said, you should be thanking me right now because now you know who is really your friend. And then I said this. This is true. I said, it's very few of them. <laughs> and he answered. He said, they have been few all along. It's just that you thought you had more. I need five people with Victory Outreach who can give God some glory. I need ten people who can shout. Because when you were accused, you found who has your back. And can I tell you something more? If you're really in a bad place, if everybody left you, if your mama left you, if your daddy left you, if your wife left you, if your children left you, if everybody turned their back on you, I want to tell you, God's got your back. He is on your side. You are not alone. Shout if you believe it. <laughs> Encourage yourself when you're accused. Say, oh, I'm in a good company now. I'm accused like all these God's generals. I'm accused like all these Bible characters. I'm accused like my master Jesus Christ. If I'm accused, that's one of the last stages before me going into my appointment. 
Oh, if you clap, clap like you believe it. Say I'm anointed, but I have to be afflicted, abducted, accused, and then in prison. What happens in prison? Now you're in prison. Welcome to prison. Can I get someone on the piano? Because it's prison time. I've never been to prison, thank God. But I've preached in prison. It's not nice to be in prison. But you know what's the strange thing about prison? In prison you get affirmed. Joseph was affirmed in prison. When he was in prison, he was affirmed by two. The wine bearer and the bread maker. They affirmed him. When you're in prison and you're affirmed, you have to learn how to trust more in the wine bearer than your giftings. Everybody left him but two affirmed him. There will always be two that affirm you. The spirit, the wine bearer. And the word, the bread maker. The spirit and the word affirmed him. And of course that the bread maker had to die because the word became flesh and lived among us. Say my life. Is a prophecy. Say it, my life is a prophecy for the glory of God. Every detail, every detail, every detail. That I would be 13 and watch a tape of a man. And then I would be 30. And come to preach to you this morning. And he would present me on the screen. Say every detail. So now he is affirmed. Are you ready for it? By the spirit and the word. And that should be enough for you. You might have nothing. But if you have the spirit and the word. That should be enough for you. He had developed his gifting to a new level now. First time we saw him, he was dreaming, but he didn't understand. Now we see him interpreting dreams. On the way, he got better. Oh, boy. You're getting better on the way. 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 way. God still has his way, and you're getting better on the way. And when he thinks now everything is set, I found the meaning and the purpose of my life. Can I give it to you? My last point. And then I'm going to pray for some sick people and see some healings. Look at that. My last point. This is the last point. This is the last point. He was abandoned. You think, oh, things are going, things are going, things are going. Oh, alone in prison. Listen, it's bad enough to be in prison. Now he was alone in prison. And he thought he was forgotten. And God told me there will be some people in Victory Outreach today who feel forgotten. But you're not forgotten. You're just reserved. You're reserved. You see, now he was abandoned because his time had not yet come. It's very interesting. There had to be a massive crisis outside for him to get out of prison. Let me prophesy to you. This coming economic crisis, 
is going to be the best time for Victory Outreach. It's going to be the best time for you. This is the time for Joseph to raise, to be raised. Come on, somebody. This is the time for Joseph to be raised from the dead and sit at the highest places of power. Shout if that's you. So now he gets up, he gets up, he gets up, he gets up. And I'm almost done. He gets up. And this is what happens. He goes on the right hand side of Pharaoh. He gets a taste of power. Say power. And nothing will take you down as quick. Say yes if it's true. And now he's appointed. He's appointed. He's now in his appointment. But look at that. God will sometimes give you a foretaste of your appointment to test if you're ready. And if you're not ready, you're going back to abducted, abandoned, attacked, whatever you need to learn on the way. Is this true? Say yes if it's true. What is the test? This is the test. It's the test of forgiveness. I was 16 years old and preaching in a small church. And while I was preaching, this is a true story. Listen. A gentleman walks through the door. It's the same guy who almost killed my mother. My mom had to leave our country to hide in another country because he was following us everywhere. And I'm preaching and he's coming in the service. And the guy was not humble. Listen. He came from the back in the middle of my sermon and sat on the front row with a girlfriend. I was like thinking to myself, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't victory outreach. Because if it was victory outreach, they would be like, hey, you came late, stay there. <laughs> Nobody stopped him. Like he came like a boss and sit on the front row. The man who almost killed my mom, the man who, who, who dramatically influenced my life in a negative way I thought so I was finishing the sermon and now I was, I was praying in the spirit and I was thinking maybe now I'm going to pray for him but I'm going to pray for him with the fivefold ministry <laughs> right? can I be honest I do an altar call who wants to receive prayer guess who's the first person to come up with a girlfriend he comes up A line of people come after him. And I heard the voice of God. And he said, now, you're going to pray for him like you pray for everybody else. Oh, man. Say forgiveness. Say, when I'm appointed, I have to release forgiveness. Because now I had the power to do something. And this is what I did. I didn't feel it. I didn't have like the, the desire to do it. But I stretched my hands to pray for him. And as I prayed for him, the power of God came on him. He began to weep. The girl began to weep. They went under. And God spoke to me and he said, Now you're ready for your appointment. I said, now you're ready for your appointment. I said that now you are ready for your appointment. What would I preach today if this didn't happen? What would I preach today if this didn't happen? You see, God doesn't want to delete portions of your life what God wants to do is go right in this past moment of pain and hurt and depression and suicidal thoughts and bring his healing power and break the curses and break the chains and renew your mind and give you wealth and give you prosperity and change your future but you need to receive it on the inside before it manifests on the outside shout if you believe it come on lift your hands and begin to pray in the Spirit. Lift your hands and begin to pray in the Spirit. Lift your hands and begin to pray in the Spirit. Come on and lift your hands and begin to pray. 
Come on and lift your hands and begin to pray. So, this is what I want to do. If you're right now in a moment where you're undergoing immense spiritual warfare, I need you to run to the front. If you're having suicidal thoughts, don't be ashamed. Run to the front. If you're battling depression, run to the front. If you're just having a crazy, crazy fight, I need you to come forward. I need you to come forward. I need you to come forward. And I want the church to pray. Is this a praying church? Come on. I want the church to pray. Lift your hands. I want the church to pray. I want the church to pray. I want the church to pray. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Come on and pray, 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 pray. My God, this is a house of miracles. This is a house of miracles. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Oh, come alive. Parabadara. So, lift your hands and stretch your hands. Please stretch your hands. And people are still coming. I want these gentlemen that I, I promise I'm going to tell you something. Can you come? Yes. What was your name? Felix. Are you serving? Wonderful. Can you lift your hands? Stand right here. Lift your hands up. Listen, Felix, God says, I'm increasing life. I'm increasing the ears. Just take it. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. There it is. He says, I'm increasing the ears of your life. And I went like, in the spirit, I saw like, boom, 59, 60, 61, 62, 61, 62, 63. He says increase, 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 increase. Thank you, Father God. Stretch your hands towards heaven. Your life is being increased. Stretch your hands towards heaven and ask that God will touch you right now and give it to you. This is a house of miracles. How nice is this? How nice is this? He says new beginning. He says I'm giving you a new beginning. There is a lady. Your name is like Debbie, Debbie or like Deborah or something like this. And you have a situation with your uh, digestive organs. I need you to run to the front if that's you. Take a deep breath. shake you. Receive it now. Huh? What is it? You have arthritis all your body? What's your name? Grace. Look at me in my eyes. Grace, I give you life. Take a deep breath now. Receive it. The whole thing. Don't be afraid. Take it. Move your hands. Move it by faith. Jesus. There it is. Complete wholeness. Receive it now. Lift your hands. God is, in the, God is moving in this place. Receive it. The whole thing. Miss, look at me. He's healing your soul. Take it. The whole thing. <laughs> He's healing your soul. This is a house of Come on, people. Come on, people. Come on, people. Look at me. Fire. 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 More fire. More fire on you. More fire on your family. Take the whole thing. Woo. Take it. 
This is a house. what's happening now he's healing you he's healing you look at me take it who is catching him take a deep breath catch him thank you Jesus he's healing you man look at me he's healing you just stretch your hands towards heaven my goodness People are getting healed from issues with the hearing. Hearing. You have trouble hearing? Or you have like noise in your ear? You're getting healed right now. Thank you, Jesus. Is that him? What is it? He can't hear? Good? Okay. Which ear? Both, look at me, sir. What's your name? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. You see, I'm telling you that. People are getting healed now from all kinds of things. Who is the lady who you came with my migraine, migraine headache? You should be somewhere here. Migraine. You came with like migraine headache. You're a lady and you have like, you came with powerful headaches like migraine. Wave at me if that's you. Okay. Come. Come. Did you have it? When you came. What's your name? Huh? Cecilia. Come on and stretch your hands towards heaven and receive from God. Pick this gentleman up. My ears are burning. People are getting healed now. What's happening? Huh? I could hear. You can hear now. I could hear. I need some people to give God glory. You should be more excited about this. The wife is like, the wife is like, the wife is like, get the arthritis too. The arthritis. Tell him to get healed. Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the name of Jesus. Come on. This is a house of miracles. Come alive.
Lift your hands. Take a deep breath. And say, Holy Spirit, give it to me now. Do you really want it? Lift your hands. Who is catching her? Take a deep breath. Boom. You see? I learned from watching all these tapes a little bit about things. amazing more ask for more people lift your hands and just ask for it the Holy Spirit is in this place oh, aren't you thankful that I did it the way I did it aren't you thankful that I allowed you to go through all of this stuff I allowed it because I needed it to happen that way now I'm giving you a new beginning but with all that wisdom now it's going to be incredible you see he says you're leaving the pain behind but you're taking all the lessons you're not losing any of the lessons does that make sense you're not losing any of the lessons you have children you have a daughter in your family the whole Shake them, God. Shake them. Ooh. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, right? What's your name? Elena. Elena. It's overwhelming. More. More. Woo. <laughs> Elena. Fresh oil. What are you believing God for? Take it! Oh, catch. You have to catch. It's okay. Don't worry. Let her lay down. Let her, let her down. Lift your hands. Look at me. You will live and not die. You will declare the goodness of God. You understand what I'm saying? You're going to be like Deborah in the Bible in your old age. You're going to win victories for God in the spirit realm. Take a deep breath. Let me fix that. Father, now. There it is, just take it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Lift your hands, people. Say, God, whatever you have, I want it. And whatever I have to go through, I want it. I am willing to receive it in Jesus' name. You see, he's feeling you right now. Lift your hands. All the way there. He's feeling you. That section there. Lift your hands and just receive. Receive from him. Breathe deep. Breathe deep and just receive. There it is. More, Lord. More. 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 Oh. Oh, Jesus. And God says, what I'm going to do with these young people is going to be extraordinary. The guy with the blue and yellow, bring him to me. Blue and yellow. God is pouring liquid oil on you. Come, brother. And the gentleman next to him with the hat, L.A. hat. Come, come, don't worry. Don't worry about it. 
Can we do it again? Lift your hands and sing, Come Alive. Come Alive in the name of Jesus. right now fears are being broken right now depression is being broken right now as you stand here in the front there are people from the leaders from the elders who are going to come and minister to you and during that I want to do a healing prayer and so many of you are going to get physical healing now it's going to be amazing are you ready for it we listen Already people are getting healed. Already people are getting healed. But now it's going to be like an explosion. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Yes. This is what I saw in my spirit. I saw people getting healed in this service. God says, this is the bread of the children. It's not because of me. It's not because of anything. It's just because this is your bread. This is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. So right now I want you to put your hand, one of your hands, on whatever part of your body you're believing God to heal right now. Just do it real quick. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you going to flow with the Spirit? Say yes. Are you going to flow with the Spirit? Say yes. Are you going to flow with the Spirit? Say yes. yes. Just put your hand on your body. And say this, Jesus. I receive your healing virtue from my body. Right now. By faith, I receive it. It's not by works. It's not because of me. It's because of your goodness and your love that you make me whole. In Jesus' name. And now just take a deep breath. I step in the office and authority that has been given to me by the and I take authority over every healing. I take authority over every pain. I speak to every process in your body. Wholeness. Pain, I command you to leave right now. Arthritis, I rebuke you in Jesus' name.
deafness. I rebuke you now in Jesus' mighty name. And right now, there is like a wave coming over this sanctuary. A wave of healing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right now, if you have a lump or a growth or a tumor in your body, it's disappearing in the sound of my voice. In the mighty name of Jesus. Again, another migraine headache got healed on my right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Breathing problems are being healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Asthma in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. For your healing virtue. In Jesus mighty name. Now as you lay your hand on your body. The Holy Spirit is moving through the sanctuary. I want you to just close your eyes. And see him work on you. Allow him to work on you. Don't resist him please. Don't try to understand and analyze everything just allow him allow the Holy Spirit to work on you and bring healing to you now a lady on my right just got healed you had a lump in your breast and now it disappeared under the sound of my voice thank you Jesus a bad shoulder just got healed thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. There is a gentleman, you're sitting on my left in this section, and you had trouble swallowing. You had pain in your throat, and you had a hard time even swallowing. So now you just got healed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Asthma got healed there in the back, all the way in the back. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody's hearing got healed. On my right, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. People, begin to pray right now. God is really moving in this place. God is really moving in this place. Diabetes got healed here in the middle section. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Digestive problems got healed right now under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus. There is a lady who is sitting on the eighth row. And you have digestive problems. And you just got healed. You know in your body that you're healed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. People, begin to pray. One more minute. Come on, let's go after God. One more minute. Let's go after God. One more minute. One more minute. One more minute. I want you to pray and receive. Thank you, Holy Spirit. On my left, there is a gentleman on my left. You had an injury in your left foot. And you just got healed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There are so many healings taking place now. This is what I want you to do. As we sing this song, this is what I want you to do. I want you to check your body. If you couldn't hear, check your hearing if you couldn't see check your eyesight if you couldn't move a part of your body check it and especially if you're one of the words of knowledge that I gave one of the the words that I released please check your body right now because you're already healed I want you to just approve it in your body thank you Holy Spirit another lady got healed from a lump in the breast thank you Father God this is what I want you to do now. Somebody's neck got healed. You were in, a, in an accident. You had a neck injury. And you had a hard time moving your neck. And now if you move it, you'll find that you're healed. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Actually, you had a situation where not only did you have pain, but every time you move your neck, there was like a weird 
sound it was making. And now when you check, you see it's gone. Check it now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody's right hand got killed right now from injury. You're sitting right there on my right. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. As we sing this song, this is what I want you to do. I want you to check your body, okay? I want you to check your body. And I want you to do it up to the ninth time. So check it once, check it twice, check the lump in your breast. And if it's still there or maybe it got much smaller, I want you to check it again and again until the ninth time. Are you ready to do it? Say yes. And as you do it, and the music goes on, there is healing virtue flowing in this place. So whatever the healing is that you need from God, it might not be a physical healing. Maybe you need a healing of your soul. Maybe you need a healing from depression. Do you know that Jesus still heals depression? Jesus still heals depression. He said, come unto me, all of you who are burdened, heavy laden, and I will give you peace. Lift your hands, worship the Lord, and begin to check your body. Let's worship. Come on. Checking your body, let's have a few healings. Miss, what happened to you? You want to tell the people? Well, I've been um, spitting out like bloody mucusy tissue every day um, for the last three years. Three years. 
for three years and <laughs> and I was checking to see because I always have like backed up mucus like I'm always struggling with that and sometimes I can't like talk or sing or <laughs> do things that you know but right now I'm talking and I don't feel like plugged up and it's <laughs> It's so nice. I'm just so thankful to the Lord for healing me and healing my mom. And my dad. But you know what? It's a family business. Stand next to your mom. That's your mom, right? But isn't it special how God moves with families? Because we don't know these people. But it's everywhere I go. God moves with like whole families. But you know what? God is anointing you for healing now. That's what he told me to tell you. Lift your hands. He says... You went through this, and now this compassion that you have, I'm going to use it to heal the sick. Take a deep breath and receive it now. I'm not going to even touch you. Just take the whole thing. Jesus. Isn't it amazing? like God is pouring liquid power on her liquid oil the whole family and you you had trouble seeing right come come near me what's your name huh Joanna so for how many years did you have this issue with your sight because of the diabetes but we are also believing God to heal that too but how clear can you see that now? I can see very well. I think we need to give God praise. I said from 1 to 10, like if 1 was the lowest and 10 was the highest. It's 11. Right? But now your sinus got healed too. Take a deep breath. Again, don't worry. Isn't it nice? And how God knows everything about you is also nice. He says, I'm healing all the pain of your past, all the trauma and the abuse. And he says, I'm healing your mind, your mind, areas of your brain that were hurt and areas of your soul. What's your name? Joanna, this is why we do what we do. Long flights and lonely hotels. Just for this. Just for this. More. Take it. More. And I want you to see what happens with the diabetes. Because you're getting a full healing now. This is not partial. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not partial. What's happening with you? You. Come. Yes, you. What's happening with you? Yeah. Lift your hands. Smile. Lift your hands. Smile. Smile. He breaks it off of you now. As you cry, you should smile. New joy. New joy. What's your name? What's your name? Huh? Vina. New joy, Vina. Receive it now. Come on, guys. Lift your hands and just... Oh, I really enjoy Jesus. How many of you enjoy Jesus? Say I. So check your body again until the ninth time. And the lump in the breast that disappeared. Who are you? Come on. You need to be fast. I've been do Wave at me if that's you. I've been doing this for like 15 years of my life. Where is your hand? There. Run. 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 I've been doing this for 15 years. I know when I know. And there is another lady. You're sitting in this section. Why are you ashamed of that? Check and give me a sign that that's you. But be fast. Don't let me call you. What's your name? Huh? Laura. How long did you have it? 
about two months. They told you what? You had a couple of lumps in your breast, and now you checked and they disappeared. How amazing is that? More. More. In the newness of life. The newness of life. You should be clapping louder for Jesus. You should be clapping louder for Jesus. You should be clapping louder for Jesus. You should be shouting louder for Jesus. Where are my evangelists? Where are the people of fire? So now, as you're checking your body, I'm going to say one last prayer. And this is going to be a different prayer. What's your name again? Laura. That felt nice. Laura, I'm going to say a different prayer now. You know what that prayer is? I did this prayer last year in Israel. I was preaching in Israel at our conference. And I did this prayer over the people of impartation. Because I really got a revelation on that years ago. That it's possible if the anointing is real. It's, it's, it's two things. It's transferable. And it's tangible. Say transferable and tangible. So you could get this. How many of you want it? You can get it. Because it's, it's the Holy Spirit. But you need to ask for it. So now I'm going to say one last prayer. And this prayer is going to be a prayer of impartation. That you will go out of this place and heal people with the power of Jesus. Listen. You don't have to do it in any style like any preacher. You can do it even with your smile. But you will receive a real impartation. Does that make sense? You will receive a real impartation. How many of you want it? Say I. You really want it. You want it more. You want it more. Where are you from? You're from here? Chino. Wow. You want it more. Use her God. Anoint her God. Anoint her God. Anoint her God. Anoint her God. More. 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 How many of you want to say yes? Before that, let's stand. Let us all stand. I'm about to finish, but let's stand. I know I went a little over time. But it's worth it, though, for a few people to get healed. How many of you can say that there is a tangible difference in your body, whether it be in your hearing or your sight or pain that you had from before you stepped into this building? And after we prayed for healing, wave at me, wave, wave. Look at all these hands. Wave, wherever you are, just wave. Wave, real nice. Wave and make the devil nervous, come on. Come on, Victory Outreach, Chino. Come on, Victory Outreach, Chino. This is what we do. Are you ready to receive that now? Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, freely we have received. Freely we give. I pray that my visit to this place will leave a mark of healing. The well of healing has been in this church since the very beginning. But I pray that even now, I am redigging this well of healing and deliverance. That people will be radically saved, radically healed, radically delivered by the power of God. And 
Father, I pray for the gifts of healing and signs and wonders to be imparted now. Receive it and say yes. I pray for a special impartation for every single person who wants to be used for your glory and honor. Lift your hands and receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it. More. Receive it. Some of you will be healers in the business world. Some of you will be healers in the business world. I'd say, I said that some of you will be healers in the business world. Where you'll be signing a deal with somebody and their life will change through the presence of God that's on your life. Come on, lift your hands and ask for it. Ask for it. Ask for it. Ask for it with passion. And he's, how he said, this, we've had a well here since the very beginning. And that's so true. We've had revival after revival after revival. The early days and a small beginning. My dad would have evangelists similar to him. Young, young guys coming in. Sometimes go two weeks long. We may do that again sometime. Who knows? It's happening in some places in our, in our world, right? They're going for day after day after day after day. Why not happen in Victory Outreach Mother Church? I'm open to whatever God wants. I don't know. He asked me earlier, he says, how much time do I got? You got you be free. When you're free and the move, God moves, I like it. When God's not moving and you overtime, stop. In this case, God's been moving like rivers of healing. <laughs> so we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We want to have you back again in the future. But we're going to do something special as we always do. We, we bless our guests. Because if you've been blessed, with the same measure, bless in return. So if you don't have your purse at the altar, you can go back to your seat and get it. Or if you need to do it online, you can do it right there. Or you can do it through all those different channels. Let's be a blessing. If you're online, give something special. We want to be a big blessing. He didn't ask for anything, by the way. I want you to know. What we love to do, love offering. Say love offering. You're not as excited as you were early about your healing. Love offering. Say it loud and proud. Love offering. So we want to give a special love offering and pour into. You know, when you plant seed into a powerful ministry like this, you reap it back in your life. You reap back what you give. And I've seen people that give big and they get big. They receive big. So as you prepare your offering, we're going to pray for it right now. And do something special, please, okay? Lord, we thank you for your servant. We thank you, God, that you used him in such a powerful way. All the way from Bulgaria, God, you've anointed him to preach the word to nations. We thank you that he's with us today. Bless him in all ways, God. Body, mind, soul, and spirit, every which way, and also financially as well. And bless each giver as we sow into this great ministry. In Jesus' name, give as you're giving unto the Lord with love. Go ahead. Get on, get on, sing it loud. 